For those who subscribe to Critical Race Theory, understanding whiteness and all of its problems is key to understanding all races in America. In this expose, we will reference the March 25, 2021 article by Peter Kersenow of The Federalist. In this piece, Mr. Kersenow explains how people who adhere to critical race theory essentially point the finger squarely at white people as the root of all the evils in America's present as well as in America's past. Also, we will explain what critical race theory is as defined by, of all things, the American Bar Association. We will reveal how the mere fact of being white is believed to be considered the unforgivable sin which must be atoned for. We will discuss how this twisted ideology has permeated into the mainstream as well as at the Smithsonian in our nation's capital. Will these revisionist trends become a mainstay in American society even so far as in our public school classrooms? Or will the American people reject critical race theory and all of its lies, deceptions, and misrepresentations once and for all? We shall see. Finally, we will show how critical race theory has been gaining influence over the past several decades and has exploded since the George Floyd incident last summer. And if you like what we do here at The Conservative Take, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as well as the bell icon so that you will be notified for any future content. Now here is why critical race theory is not only destructive, but also is inherently racist. Let's begin. Setting the stage for racist ideology. Critical race theory or CRT has occupied an increasingly prominent place in public discourse since President Trump issued Executive Order 13950 combating race and sex stereotyping, which banned the federal government from using CRT in employment training. During the general election, then-candidate Joe Biden described CRT as nothing more than teaching people to be cognizant of others' feelings. One of President Biden's first acts was to revoke Executive Order 13950 and replace it with Executive Order 13985, advancing racial equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government. But what the heck is it? But what is CRT? Many people think that critical race theory is part of the civil rights movement, but that is incorrect. Most Americans of a certain age believe that Martin Luther King Jr.'s hope that his children would be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character is what society should strive toward and is the practical definition of not being racist. CRT and the many millions of millennials, Gen Zers, and current school children have been steeped in its tenets reject colorblindness as both impossible and inequitable. The American Bar Association, ABA, explains that CRT is not a diversity and inclusion training, but a practice, not a noun, but a verb. The ABA continues. It critiques the social construction of race and institutionalized racism, perpetuate a racial caste system that relegates people of color to the bottom tiers. CRT recognizes that race intersects with other identities, including sexuality, gender identity, and others. CRT recognizes that racism is not a bygone relic of the past. Instead, it acknowledges that the legacy of slavery, segregation, and imposition of second-class citizenship on black Americans and other people of color continue to permeate the social fabric of this nation. This official description of CRT from the ABA is worth paying attention to for a few reasons. First off, if CRT isn't merely training, but a practice, that means it isn't confined to one day or even one aspect of life. It's something you do over and over so it becomes ingrained in the way you're thinking and seeing the world. Because it's evolving and malleable, you can never say, these are the rules, or we just have a social system. You can never rest because this practice and evolution entail constantly searching for new aspects of injustice. Thus, people who are ascribed to CRT are fond of phrases like, we have not yet reached the mountain top, the arc of the history bends towards justice, and so on. The racial caste system that relegates people of color to the bottom tiers implies that race is used by all white people and only white people to oppress all people of color. It doesn't matter how many black CEOs, doctors, engineers, politicians, or celebrities there are, nor does it matter that Asian students academically outperform white students. 
because whites are the single largest racial group in the country under CRT, they and anything that they can even remotely link to white culture are considered oppressive to all non-white people. The more victim categories a person falls into, the more oppressed he or she is by whites, particularly straight white men, even if the person never experiences disparate treatment. If you are a disabled black lesbian, you are oppressed because of your multiple intersecting identities according to CRT and closely related to intersectionality theory. Finally, the description of the legacy of slavery, segregation, and the imposition of second class status on black Americans and other people of color continues to permeate the social fabric of this nation. It's referring to what we have come to know as systemic racism. Because the United States is primarily founded by and populated by whites, and because slavery and Jim Crow were due to whites, every system in the United States is tainted by racism to this day. Whiteness as a microaggression. Our economic system, school system, criminal justice system, all of them are fundamentally racist, concludes CRT. The proof offered in support of this proposition is that blacks and Hispanics have worse outcomes than whites, even when no proof of disparate treatment is offered. Nor is the fact that Asians do better across almost all of these metrics than whites disprove that the systems are fundamentally racist. Whiteness and white privilege are also important concepts of CRT. They are linked to the concept of racial caste discussed before. The taxpayer-funded Smithsonian National Museum of African American History asserts that whiteness is at the core of understanding race in America and the standard by which all other groups are compared. The Smithsonian continues, Whiteness and normalization of white racial identity throughout America's history has created a culture where non-white persons are seen as inferior or abnormal. Whiteness and its accepted normality also exist as everyday microaggressions towards people of color. Acts of microaggressions include verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights and snubs or insults towards non-whites. Whether intentional or not, these attitudes communicate hostile and derogatory or harmful messages. Since white people in America hold most of the political, institutional, and economic power, they receive advantages that non-white people do not. These benefits and advantages or varying degrees are known as white privilege. For many white people, this can be hard to hear, understand, or accept, but it is true. If you are white in America, you have benefited from the color of your skin. CRT has been gaining influence over the past several decades, but has exploded since the George Floyd incident last summer. White supremacy is alleged to be everywhere. You may not have noticed it because it's so integral to American society. Therefore, if you are a white person, you must constantly examine yourself and your society for any vestiges of white supremacy. If you are a person of color, you must reflect on how white supremacy has affected you. Behaviors of white people. To give but one example, in August 2020, the University of Kentucky held trainings for student resident advisors, RAs. There was one training for black indigenous person of color, which was called the healing space for staff of color, while white RAs were expected to attend the white accountability space. RAs who were participating in the white accountability space were directed to review an attached document entitled Common Racist Behaviors and Attitudes of White People prior to the session. The behaviors and attitudes in the document included believe that they have earned what they have rather than acknowledge the extensive white privilege and unearned advantages they receive, believe that if people of color just worked harder, not notice the daily indignities that people of color experience, deny them and rationalize them away with PLE's perfectly logical explanations. Accept and feel safer around people of color who have assimilated and are closer to white. Blame people of color for barriers and challenges they experience. Believe that if they worked harder, they could pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Dismiss and minimize frustrations of people of color and categorize the person raising issues 
as militant, angry, having an attitude, working their agenda, not being a team player, or playing their race card. Focus on their good intent as whites rather than on the negative impact of their behavior. Focus on how much progress we have made rather than on how much more needs to change. Walk on eggshells and act more distant and formal with people of color. Segregate themselves from people of color and rarely develop authentic relationships across race, etc. In short, whites are damned if they do and damned if they don't. The University of Kentucky training wasn't an isolated incident. There were similar trainings for white male employees of the Sandia National Laboratory, for employees of Seattle city government, and for teachers in the Buffalo Public Schools, to name a few. They're almost certainly taking place in your city government and public school system. They teach Americans to hate their country and each other. No nation can long survive such inanity and divisiveness. The USSR's Nikita Khrushchev, Leonard Brezhnev, and Yuri Andropov are spinning in their graves, unable to believe that after all their efforts to undermine and divide Americans, we're doing it much more successfully to ourselves. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on critical race theory? Do you think it is a necessary evil? Or do you think with us that it is in fact an evil belief system designed not to right past wrongs of America, but to carve up this country into warring factions for power hungry Marxists? Let us know in the comments below or jump over to our Discord server where you can not only interact with us and others via text, voice, or video, but you will also have access to all of our archived research materials that we use to create our videos. Link is in the description. If you enjoy the content on The Conservative Take, please hit those like and subscribe buttons, the bell icon, and please share with your friends. It really helps to grow the channel as we have set a goal to reach 10,000 subscribers. If you would like to support this channel further, please click on the join button below to find out how to do just that. Also, please check out some more videos that we have right here.